How is it going, everyone? I hope everyone is doing well. This video will be the second part of the Web Application Penetration Testing for Absolute Beginners course. Last time, we looked at HTTP GET requests. I will leave the video right here in the info card. And this time, we will be covering HTTP POST requests, the request body, and HTTP response. Alrighty, let's get to it. Now that we have looked at a GET request, let's look at a POST request. As we said, a POST request is simply an HTTP request that starts with the method POST. It has a URI as usual, the host as always, a user's agent, and then we have the content type header. In an HTTP request response, it's present in both cases, and it indicates the type of data that is being sent or received in the body of the message. Different content types are used to specify how the data should be interpreted by the server. Some common content types are JSON, if you are sending a JSON object, HTML, if you are sending an entire HTML page, it can be an image, it can be XML, or it can even be just plain text. I will explain in just a second why our content type in this example is set to that specific value. And then we have content length, which indicates how big the body of the HTTP request is. It's set to 29 because we have 29 characters in the body. So you may ask, where is the body of the HTTP request? The body is the bottom part separated by two lines from the rest of the headers. In our case, it has some parameters and some values, as we saw before in the JET request. These are called post parameters. They do not start with a question mark symbol since they are not part of the URI, but just like the GET parameters, they are separated by the ampersand symbol. So just like we saw before, the parameter is named param1, and it has a value of value1. Now this is very important. Keep in mind, the HTTP body can contain many types. It can contain a file, a JSON object, and many types. So how does the server determine how it can interpret the body? It does that using the content type. In our case, we have XWWW form URL encoded. So when the server receives that, it says, okay, the client is going to send me some form values, and form values mean, for example, login credentials. You see, when you fill in your username and password and then click send, your credentials are sent in this format to the server with something that looks like this. Username equals user and password equals admin 123. And the URL encoded in X form, URL encoded, just means that, hey server, you should know that some characters that you will receive in the form will be encoded with some special characters. So please take that into consideration and decode the special characters accordingly. Don't worry, I will explain what encoding is in the following video. But for now, I think that's enough for the HTTP request. Now let's see how the server responds to our requests. Here is an example of what an HTTP response looks like. It does not have a method because it's not really applicable. It's just a response. So it starts with HTTP 1.1. That's the HTTP version, not very important to us. What's important is what's coming next. It's the 200 OK, which is called the HTTP status code. This indicates the result of the request. In our case, a 200 OK means that the request was successful. HTTP status codes vary depending on how our request has been interpreted. For example, if you send a request to a page that does not exist, you probably will get a response, which is the infamous 404 page not found response. The next header that we have is the date, which is the date on the server itself. Next up is the server header, which can be very useful for us in the enumeration phase of the pen test. For example, if the server header provides version information, we might be able to find out if the server is vulnerable to a known attack that we can exploit and gain access to the server. Next up is the content type, which indicates in what format 
the server has responded. In our case, it's HTML, which means that the server has replied with an entire HTML document. This is generally used when the server replies with a page that will be displayed to the user. Then we have the content length, the connection, keep alive header, and then, as always, to separate the headers from the body, we'll use an empty line. And then we have our HTML content in the body. This should be enough for this video, so let's do our recap of what we learned today. We learned about HTTP POST requests, request bodies, HTTP responses, status codes, and finally, HTTP content types. Congrats, you made it till the end. I hope you learned something new through this video. And in the following video, we'll take a look at the different types of encoding that exist and how they can be useful to us. I will leave the video here in the end screen so you can watch it if you are interested. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. If you appreciate the content, take a moment to subscribe to the channel to stay updated. And as always, happy pen testing.